Welcome back, everybody. Buford Furrow Jr. made it very clear to the authorities that he opened fire on that community center for two reasons, to kill Jews and to convince others to kill Jews. Now, this is clearly a hate crime in the eyes of many people, but should the suspect stand trial for murder or for a hate crime at all? Joining us now live in our studios, radio talk show host, Rabbi Yaakov Spivak. Thanks for joining us. And he's here to talk with us about your points of view on a very troubling situation. Certainly you have listeners calling in outraged by what has happened. At the same time, many people resign to the fact that we're living under the same climate with issues that still plague us today. The problem that the listeners are um, upset with is the fact that America has come to this point, that we can open fire on uh, young children and have uh, and greet it with a sort of jaded uh, uh, distance. People are upset. How did America come to this point? I don't think the anger is directed so much as this man who may turn out to be just a, a nut, but, but we're angry at ourselves. Some of my listeners are calling and saying, why are we able to take this and walk, walk away from it? Why doesn't it bother us? What happened? What would have happened 30 years ago? Why is it that we can... But don't you think a lot of people are bothered by this? They are outraged? I mean, the fact that somebody could open fire on young children, innocent children? But then there was uh, Jonesboro, and then there was Littleton, and, uh, and, and now there's this. There's time and time again. People just take it and uh, go with it. You know, what uh, some people think is that this uh, individual is using the media as his own PR firm. I mean, he's come through. Some people have called up with the idea that the media has become sort of subliminal co-conspirators with this guy because what he's offering them is the opportunity to at least the media and law enforcement. He he says to law enforcement, he smiled. The man gave himself up. He he wasn't that there was he was afraid of the police department surrounding him. This man took a taxi to to, to Las Vegas, walked in with a smile to the FBI headquarters, and says, "This is a wake-up call to kill Jews." All of a sudden, all over the country, front page. New York Times. I heard it six times on the Today Show today. Conspiracy, a uh, wake-up call to kill Jews over and over. He's using the media. He's a lot of times in situations like this, suspects with these kinds of minds uh, feel that they are glorified because they are uh, front-page news. And right. They are the lead story on every newscast. And, and how do you do it? You walk in and you open fire on kids and then the media, he's saying to them, he's trying to have the media enter into him with a pact with the devil. He's saying, you know, uh, you want to sell soap, here's how you do it. Plaster my face all over the networks. Plaster my face all over the, the news shows. But one could counter that by putting these stories out there, that it shows people the climate of hate that we still live under. Yes, but he is appealing to a certain uh, group of people who are going to look at him as a hero. How, how many... Uh, Cases out there are like that are going to say, "Look, this, I'm a nobody." Like this guy was a nobody, and now with with what people, some people call Dodge City journalism, you know, if it bleeds, it leads. Then uh, all of a sudden, he's a hero to these people. And as a result, unfortunately, around the country, synagogues and uh, other Jewish community centers are beefing up security. Absolutely, uh, Jewish community centers are concerned. Uh, the pictures that we saw of little children being led uh, to safety it was so sobering. Conjured up, conjured up to me pictures of other little children and lineups that I saw 50 years ago and uh, in pictures that took place then. It's a very, very frightening thing. Now what I find interesting though is that you don't really believe that hate crime legislation is the answer to try to send a clear message that these types of uh, issues, these crimes, are not going to be tolerated in America. I think if there's anything we have to emphasize is that this was a crime against America and Americans, not a crime against Jews. This goes in with the same as Jonesboro and Littleton. This was a crime against children against Americans. If we up the ante Uma to the point where we make the prosecution prove that or require him to prove what was going on in this man's mind that was said in front of the testimony at the uh, Senate Judiciary Committee. One Jewish lawyer who had suffered anti-Semitism in his life said that if we require this to happen then we're going to have to prove an extra level. It was like in the Simpson trial. In the Simpson trial they had, they had to prove beyond a reasonable doubt. They couldn't do it. He got off. Then in the second trial when they only had to prove the preponderance of evidence, then he was he was uh, adjudicated as guilty. If we require 
the prosecution to prove what was going on in this man's heart and this man's mind, he's going to walk. So you just don't believe uh, uh, under any circumstances hate crime legislation can work? America was made for, as a country for all groups. It wasn't made, and, and the laws were established to, to protect you whether you were Chinese, Japanese, black, white, Jewish, Catholic, Protestant, Italian, uh, Irish. And if we start to say, well, we have to make special laws for this ethnic group or that ethnic group, it's going to cause problems. We're all in this together. This was an assault against children, American children. We have to prosecute it that and way. And really quickly, though, you know, your listeners are talking to you about their concerns, mm. of course, over the last several months about these outrageous acts of violence uh, in Littleton, in Jonesboro, uh, right now in, in Los Angeles. Um, are you finding that people are becoming uh, more vocal about saying that gun control perhaps is the answer? No, that's interesting. Uh, gun control is not really what pe where people think it's at. As strange as it is, people want to retain their guns because they think the climate in America is so bad that they, they have to be able to protect themselves. I mean, they, they think it's becoming Dodge City. What they think is happening, what my callers tell me, is that we have to make sure that the law enforcement does its job. Why would this guy walking, as your own reporter said, why was this guy walking after having uh, supposed to have given himself up and surrendered uh, to uh, for carrying a gun? And they, they, it wasn't a big deal to them. They let him walk, and this is what happens. To, to make new laws every time something happens can bring anarchy, my listeners are saying. Let's enforce what we have on the books. We came this far in America with it, and it'll, it stood us in the past, and it's going to stand us good in the future if we enforce the laws on the books. All right. Rabbi, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your insights today.